A car. A Jamali. Barry. Bowman. Brown. Braun. Bush. Boucher. Calzado. Cantu. Carrington. <laughs> Casey. Chung, Here. Clark, Here. Cook, Curtis, Here. Davila, Here. Estes, Bull, I don't believe that. <laughs> Forrester, Forrester, Fulton, Gamble, Graham, Hardy, Hilbig, Who, Johnson, Kuntz, La Hog, Leon, Mace, Here. Mitchell, Here. Nibel, you jerk, <laughs> you jerk, <laughs> dead gummit, Perkins, you better not do that to me, Perkins, no, yes, this isn't impressive, yes, this is late, Reeves, Perkins, look what you guys got. You're making all kinds of mistakes here. Reinhardt. Yeah. Right, Raymond. Yeah. Rutz. Yeah. Savoy. Yeah. Sadoki. Yeah. Stein, I never, I know Stein was here. We already talked. Stevens. <laughs> tar, tar, Taborga. Tarboga. 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 Thompson. Thompson. Tidewell, Tidwell, Here. Triska, Here. Vickers, Wiley, Zapeda. Here. All right, well, now I know why the class looks so empty. Where's Estes? Estes, oh, golly, okay. All right. Just, just curious. When you bring me up quiz A and say, I don't understand. I've been there every time. I never missed uh, all right, we were working on a beam that was possibly going to laterally torsionally buckle. The first thing we did, the last thing we did last time, the first case we studied, the L sub B of the beam was relatively short, less than L sub P. Therefore, we were uh, in the stability range of no elastic buckling. It is a compact shape, so I'm not going to have to worry about if the flanges or the web buckle. That won't happen. So it's merely a matter of lateral buckling, yes or no. Now then, the beam is 20 feet long. Obviously, we've got to know where these points are to know if we're beyond or before these points. We have equations for them. Here's where the L plastic is where the plastic moment quits being available to you and you have to start reducing the uh, nominal moment. This is your plastic moment. These need fees on them someday, obviously. This is M sub R. What is M sub R, sir? Sir? Yes, go ahead. Answer the question. You don't know? You don't know your own name? That was the question. What's your name? Iyer. Uh, I'm sorry. Kyle Curtis. Curtis. Okay, Mr. Curtis. What does L sub B stand for? Ask your buddy there. Don't know. You don't have an idea what L sub B is. Jeez, man, you guys really need a better prof. I'm telling you. L sub B is the unbraced length of your beam, L sub B. It can fall between zero, L plastic, L plastic and L when the radius of gyration seriously takes over. Yes, I know, all this stuff is on the tape. You say, I just watch it. I never listen to you. I watch it at night. It's no less boring in the evening than it is now. 
Plus, I get a little bit of social time in now. Or a little relaxation sleep. Yeah. All right, so this one's going to be 20 feet long. Here's the equation for how long L plastic is. You know, I'm sure you hope that I won't give you one that you're not given LP in the book. Most of them are in the book. And here's the equation for L sub when the radius of gyre. Oh, wow, man. Have to really be mad at you. To, there's one or two in the book that are wrong, I think. But what I might do is I might ask you to verify the number in the book and then watch you go crazy. <laughs> so anyway, this one's going to be at 8.69 feet, and this one's going to be at 29.28 feet. We're between 8.69 and 29. We're at about 20 feet right about here. We know which equation to use. We use the equation... That is the straight line equation starting at the plastic moment and dropping at a given rate depending on how far L sub B is down the road. L sub B minus L sub P is how far to the right you went beyond L sub P. L sub R minus L sub B is the total length across those two dimensions. Here is your height. Your height is... 0.7 f sub y s sub x, that's m sub r, that's this point here. From m sub p, that gives you the drop. And then the drop divided by the run gives you the slope. There's your drop divided by the run. And then, because there is no c sub b value in this region, in other words, you, you're already at the peak. You can't go above me in plastic no matter what. So there is no correction factor for you in this region down in here. But in this region, you may really not have bent your beam as badly as Timoshenko thought you might be able to or that you really could. So somebody came up with a Christmas present, a correction factor in bending. It's always bigger than one. If it was less than one, it wouldn't be a very good correction, wouldn't be a very good present. But you do have to be careful because this thing here may say five. And so you come and pick the number and that right there, and then you go talk about the correction factor. If it says five, it's going to put you up here. You cannot go above in plastic. But the C sub B is in the straight line part of the equation. Here's where it says less than in plastic. So you put in M plastic. We got that from last time because that's that was the answer last time. I went ahead and divided it by 12. He waited until the end and divided it by 12 down here. Uh, there's your M plastic minus. Here's your uh, the M sub R. Here's the base of that M sub R, that M sub R uh, from the M sub P. There's your M sub P minus this uh, gives you the drop. There's how far it dropped over. That's how far you went out. It's just a straight line equation, 479 kip feet. So 479 kip feet is how much you got. If you don't take the Christmas present, now if you don't take the Christmas present, then I don't have to worry about this equation ever lying, trying to push you above in plastic. Um, and I don't know, did we? Maybe we haven't gotten to that yet. Does he... He says C sub B is a 1. I think we hadn't really talked about that in enough detail that he he just told us we were going to take C sub B as equal to 1 for these cases. Then he also didn't tell us how it was bent. We don't have a moment diagram for it, so we wouldn't have any choice but to take C sub B as equal to 1. So then the design strength is our nominal strength, which is the plastic strength times 0.9. Now then, I don't remember what we got before, but I guarantee you we got less. Got 343 kip feet out of that equation. Now there are graphs for the beams that give you this. That's exactly what the graph looks like. So that for most beams, you really can say, I've got a beam that has an unbraced length of 20 feet and I know it needs to hold a moment of some number, and so it'll let you pick the beam. And we'll get into how you use those later. Well, here's one of them. Hint of things to come. 
you and I are working with a W14 by 68. You'd have to dig around before you could find that because there's a lot of these things on a page and there's a lot of pages. But there are ways to track down this person. And for a 20-foot length, you can come up until you hit the W14 by 64 and it's between 330 and 345. We got uh, 343, so that sounds right. I mean, it's not surprising that we get the same answer from the equation that he has plotted in the, in the tables or in the, on the graphs. You have to be careful. They've got two numbers. This one's for loud stress. This is for LRFD. Got to be careful. The scales are goofy. You look over on the right, and it says, now this one's already got the fee in it. Here's your fee. It'll be listed on there somewhere. Uh, available moment. Doesn't list the fee. Most of these things have the fees listed on the graph somewhere. But I guess not. I guess you just got to know it. Fee is 0.9. So these are already multiplied times 0.9, and the graph uses three kip foot increments for uh, LRFD work. The numbers on this side are for loud stress, and they are in two kip foot increments. Now, let me think about this. You can also tell from these graphs where you're at. I uh, don't have one here right now, but the graph basically looks like this. Of course, you're just getting a very small picture of it, but you can tell where you are by, if you can, you can if there's a dot, like you see a dot, that dot right there is definitely this right here. So you can tell, and you say, who cares? Well, I don't care. But I can tell you that's where Mr. Euler is taking things into his uh, equation. And this one here is that straight line equation because you see the little open dot there. That's just the way they plot them. Yes, sir. That's correct. And the reason is they're so nice for design. If you need a beam that will hold 375 kip feet and it's 22 feet long, uh, then you come up to 22 feet long and 375 kip feet big, and anything above that point will work, and that one 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 is the lightest. In other words, you check all the ones below it, and you'll find they all have a heavier weight per foot. Uh, normally, they'll be uh, shorter beams. Very cool. Are that is correct. They will be the lightest in a section. So just try this one, for instance. You got a W16 by 77, and if you go up a little bit, you find an 18 by 76. So that's why it's marked solid, because it's lighter than the ones below it. If you need this much moment, of course, you start there. And the lightest one is uh, 12 by 79. If you started right here, then there's one that will work, a W12 by 87. But you'll find lighter ones up here. Uh, then you pretty much got your choice here. One's a W16 by 89. And one's uh, 18 by 86. And it's uh, this one is taken over. And then, Darren, I don't know. That's interesting. You know, you can't hardly tell what you do in that case. Here, let's just scratch that one out. Don't go there. Right. All right. Now, we're flipping back and forth between me, my notes on the new book and the old book. Now then, we're going to go to the same 
W14 by 68. It's going to be 30 feet long. Here are the two numbers we talked about. L plastic L where the radius of gyration is killing you. 8.69, 29.28. Uh, found by a long and tedious work with an equation. And uh, 29, so we're over here at 30 feet now. We're a little to the right of that at about 30 feet. That's what you and I would call L sub braced. That's our brace length. Since it is above 30 feet, we have new equations. Equation F24 on this page. You want to see a copy of it. That's where you and I pulled a bunch of stuff out just so I could get back to it. The variables are found on page 1-25, on page 203H. In other words, if you want C sub B or E, well, you won't get E. J, C, H, 0, all of these numbers have been worked out for you, although a lot of them have equations, in case, in case you're going to build something yourself. But you stick all those numbers in there, and you find the critical buckling stress of the beam is 33.9. And the next equation, F23, or I guess the one before it actually, gives you the nominal moment. Take the critical buckling stress times the elastic section modulus. You get 291 kip feet. And since he told us to take C sub B is equal to 1, I'm in no danger of, of them lying to me. This will, this will be perfect. But you always want to check that it's less than in plastic. And it is, because we kept getting in plastic was uh, this number. Now we're down on these numbers. Now we're down in these numbers. To get the design strength, you're going to take nine-tenths of the nominal strength. And then he hasn't told us what we're really doing, but you then, of course, must check that your ultimate request is less than how much moment you have available at that length. Yeah, I guess we hadn't told you. I just told you C sub B was the thing that we had coming. Hadn't really got into it yet, because I see it's coming up now. Now, when Timoshenko uh, derived all of those equations, he was a very famous person in mechanics. He did a whole bunch of other good stuff. He said, look, there could be anything. The moment diagram could look like this, could look like this, could look, uh, you know, I'm just going to do one. I'm going to do one. I think we've talked about this, where the moments on each end were equal to each other, and every little fiber on one side of the beam is just screaming its head off that it has uh, reached its limit and wants to buckle. That'll be the worst case, and that's my equation. If you want to do something with that, because sometimes you don't actually put that moment on all of the fibers, and some of them are not screaming, you're killing me, you're killing me, that's your business. And that's what they've done to correct the fact that Timoshenko's stuff is a worst case. That correction factor is 12.5 times the maximum moment found in your span. Your span will always be the distance between braces. So, for example, if you have a beam that looks like this, You will have braces there, whether they show it in the book or not. That's required. That's required by the specs. Okay. <laughs> I had no idea how that happened. And if you all bra also braced it here, and also braced it here, you couldn't get a brace there then I need to know what the moment diagram looks like between those two braces. And I need to know the moment max. Let's just say that your moment diagram looked like this. That'll be fine. I need to know your maximum moment. And I need to know the moment at the quarter point, the moment at the half point, the moment at the three-quarter point. And in this region right here, I need to know M max. And I need to know the moment at A, the moment at B, the moment at C. Moment at A, moment at B, moment at C. And for this one right here, I need to know M max. 
and I need the moment at the quarter, a moment at the half, and the moment at the three-quarter point. And I plug those values into this equation, and that's the correction factor. And it's perfect. It just does an excellent job of telling you how much more moments you can have out of that uh, Timoshenko equation because this beam was not stressed up to its max. However, sometimes it just gets a little too zealous and it lies. I'll show you an example. This is your correction factor. Now, when you take a look at the thing, all of these numbers are absolute values. In other words, believe it or not, if this is a brace and this is a brace, and out of this, to me, I see that one, but this looks a little bigger. That's M max. And between the brace point, there's M quarter point, M half point, M three quarter point. Some are positive and some are negative. The correction factor, they tell you to put in nothing but the absolute values. And it seems a little strange. Basically, what they're saying is, is this beam has the same tendency to laterally torsionally buckle as this beam. So looking at it a little closer, if I was going to look at this beam and say, I wonder if he wants to laterally buckle, this is a positive moment. It means the top of the beam is in compression. There are the bad fibers that are think, think they're little columns. And down here where there's negative moment, the compressive fibers are on the bottom. Looking at the beam from the end, I got a bunch of people on the top wanting to buckle. They don't care which way, left or right. And these people have a compressive side, and they don't care which way, left or right. They always seem to get together. They don't all just, you know, want to buckle that way. This guy wants to buckle clockwise. Well, this guy will take his lead, and he'll buckle clockwise. And I got a problem, lateral torsional buckler. Whereas if you had a moment diagram that looked like this, don't ask me how you'd get such a thing, then you'd have compression, compression, compression over this length, some bad, some not so bad. You'd have some compression in this region, some bad, and some not so bad. These are on the top. They want to buckle clockwise. And these are on the top. They'll go the same th way. They'll want to go clockwise, too. So it really doesn't matter whether or not the MoMA diagram changes size on you. The right numbers to put in this correction factor are the absolute values. Whether or not your moments is this is 200 and that's 300 and this is minus 150, you put in the absolute values. Purpose of C's to B is to account for the fact that you did not stress every fiber on the compressive side of the beam between the points of lateral support to the same extreme values as assumed by these equations on these pages. Sometimes you got to study two ranges. Here's a beam. It's got a 12-foot length between braces, and it is not too badly stressed most of the time, just a little of the time. And here is a 6-foot short length, but the whole dang thing is horribly stressed on one side of the beam. I do not know which one's going to control. You'll have to check this one for strength, and you'll have to check that one for strength. This one you won't have to check because you already checked it here. If it doesn't make sense, holler. You don't see it if you say, well, it's pretty obvious. He either has a short, highly stressed section or a long, not so highly stressed section where he gets a nice C sub B. How much C sub B do you get out of this this piece? Craig, is that who that was? Clark, no, I want Clark, Casey, John, Cantu. How much C sub B do you get out of this little piece of beam? And I don't. Most people don't. You know, he thought I was talking to him, and his head's going this way too. Anybody? What is C sub B for this? 1.0. Good. I mean, you're catching on. It's going to take a while. 
the reason you don't get a cease and be out of this, or you get a one, that's nothing, you get no present, is because every little fiber is stressed right up to the limit. And you only get Christmas presents if some of your fibers are not squealing and hollering that they have been run right up to their ability to take load. Um, uh, we just covered that. I'm getting back into the the equations listed in the new text. What page that is? Fourteen. 16.1 dash looks like 46 got erased for some or somehow try and tell you where to find these things that's 90 percent of the grief in this class it's where the devil to find these things absolute 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 here's a beam got a brace on the end got a brace on the end got a moment on that end got the same moment on that end M is equal to 100, M is equal to 100. There's the moment diagram. M max is 100 at the quarter point, at the half point, at the three-quarter point. Here's when M max is equal to the same all the way across. It's just M. Get 12 and a half M divided by 2 and a half M max, 3 times the moment of the quarter, which is M, and 4, the moment in the middle, and the moment of the three quarter, twelve and a half divided by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Twelve and a half over twelve and a half, it's a one. First case. All right, he wants to know C sub B for a uniformly loaded beam. He says M max is WL squared over eight. So he writes down WL squared over eight. To get the moment at the quarter point, he draws a free body, and he solves for the moment at the one quarter point. That's what he calls M sub A. This will also be M sub C at the three quarter point. Solves for that by statics. Puts the numbers in. There's WL squared over 8 max. There's WL squared over 8 max. There's WL squared times 330 seconds is the moment at the quarter point. There's the moment in the middle, which happens to again be M max. Here's at the three quarter point. I'll let you check out the equation for M max. Here it is right here, 330 seconds. Crank that out, you get a 1.14, which means in the very common case where you have a uniform load on your beam, simply supported, you can count on a 14% increase in whatever Timoshenko tells you. You don't ever have to work it out again. Unless you can't find a page to reference it to. If you just say times 1.14, I'll say no fair copying from your neighbor. I didn't copy it from the neighbor. It's 1.14. Well, tell me where you found that. Here it is. 3-18, page 210B. Let's see Got a two tens past this page. Ten B, two ten B, two ten B, two ten B. Here we go. Right out of page three dash eighteen in your AISC manual. Here's your case, uniformly loaded. Now it bothers me a little bit that they say none, because that's not true. There's some, but I really think it ought to say at the ends only. Or either that or none in the middle. None other than the endpoints. There's your C sub B, 1.14. What if you brace it at the ends and in the middle? 1.3. What if you brace it at the third points? 1.45 on the two ends and 1.01 in the center. Look at that. You get almost no Christmas present at all. 1.01. Reason being, uh, here's your brace. Here's your brace. There's your M max. There's your moment of the quarter. There's your M at the middle. There's your moment of the three quarter. It's not, you didn't hardly not stress it at all. You pretty much stressed it right on up to the limit, pretty much. So you don't get much. At the quarter points, 
As the fifth point has a bunch of numbers for you. Here they are uh, with concentrated loads. Here's a floor, a four beam floor system. There's four beams on here. None, they don't even know the others exist. When you put a load on this one right here, the beam which was nice and square with the world, very likely will have a tendency to flop over on the side and dump the load off on the floor. So people not wanting that to happen will probably come down and they'll put braces uh, thereby supporting this one right here in the middle. And here's a horizontal brace, which quarter point, and at this point, and then when you put the load on it, they all flop over. It's just like four drunks all trying to help each other out. So what happens is that's not going to work going to have to also add some bracing like this. In other words, then when this person says, why don't we all do this, this point will try and move up, and this point will try and also move up. Problem is, is in order for that person, in order for this person to move up, <clears throat> it's now supported, so it can't move up. So when this one tries to move up, that right there will stop it from moving up. And since you've braced this one, then you don't need any more bracing like this. They really wouldn't put it on the end like that. They'd put it in the middle so it's not so far away from the other spans. And then a full set. Theoretically speaking, you don't need this last set because this last one right here should be able to dump its load back in tension, compression, tension, compression, tension. But that's a long way to get to something solid. And so usually they'll just, and you will, just go ahead and put another set of bracing. And then that ought to brace this down four, five, six beams. Much further than that, and you're asking this to compress this member, 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 and go in tension over here. After a while, you're going to want another set. Uh, the textbook gives you several C sub Bs. He actually gives you a couple of C sub Bs that are not in the, in the manual. So probably the best thing to do is where you have the page in the manual is just copy. This is a very common one where you have moments on each end. Just copy anything that's in here on the page in the manual, which is perfectly legal, then you got it. There's the one you and I just derived. Uh, here's one with the brace in the middle. We didn't derive it, but we saw it. Here's the one for a concentrated load in the middle. Here's the one for a concentrated load in the middle with a brace also in the middle. Here's one for equal moments on each end. That's probably why the book doesn't show that, of the AISC manual. Because it's, it's a little unusual that you have the same moment on both ends of a beam. That comes when you press on a frame. When you press on the frame... Uh, this thing, if it didn't roll at all, it would come out here straight. But since it does roll a little bit and bend this girder, that means that somebody did this to the girder. Same way with on this one. You know, you might think it comes out straight, but if you stop holding it and let it do what it wants to, then it's going to roll a little bit, which means that you've done this to the girder. We already talked about rolling those points. Remember when we had the nomographs with G in them? So you could have the same moment on both ends, and if you do, you can get a number. But if you tell me this is M1 and this is point 0.8 of M1, well, then I've got to have another number. 
And since there since there isn't any limit to, you know, what you might run across, I don't think the manual bothers with it. They just ask you, what is the max? Well, this one. What's the moment of the quarter? What's the moment of the half? What's the moment of the three quarter? And get a correction factor from that. Now here's one that's not really what the book had in mind, but I, it's not to scale. I'm telling you this is 20 feet, 6 feet, and 20 feet. There's the one where you wouldn't know whether to study the long, lowly stressed beam or the short, highly stressed beam. You just about have to check them both. Here's one with a moment on one end only. <clears throat> M max, M at the quarter, M at the half, M at the three quarter, C sub B. Uh, same thing, this is the old text with all my pictures on it. I've already talked about this, we talked about this. Here's one. Uh, this one is longer than this span. The moments in this region are higher than the moments in this region. You could easily say, it's my opinion, I'm willing to take my chance with a few points. I'm only going to study this section because it's longer and because the moments are higher and I'm not going to study that one. If you've got some good engineering reason that makes sense, then that's okay. Oh, you're right. They're both the same length. Thank you. I, I was thinking this one was longer. Even if they're both, even if they're both the same, I would still say that the moments here are higher at all three points, at quarter, middle, and three quarter, than they are here. And this M max is bigger than this M max. Study that span only. There's the books, uh, there's the manual's opinion of the earth that he thinks are practical that you can use. We were working with a W14 by 68. I will tell you that in the manual, there are a set of things called Z tables. They tell you the plastic section modulus. You can also get these from the dimensions table. But also for your convenience, you remember that number right there, 8.69? That was L sub P. You remember it had the square root of the square root of the square root squared raised to the E power and all that nonsense? There it is for that beam. And there is L sub R. And they have grouped other things they find that you need commonly um, and stuck them all on one page, like a moment of inertia about the strong axis, like the plastic moment times phi in bending. And here he tells you. I'm a little surprised I don't remember them not telling you. Phi to be on just about anything where they use it. And that was 431. Here's your phi to be M sub R. These are allowed stress people. This is your best friend. We'll get to that. These are sheep. That's shear, but that's allowed people. There's shear capacity of the beam on the end of the beam or any place on the beam. Good tables. Uh, study span A, B only, study spans B, C, and C, D only, this and that, of course, are, oh no, that one's longer than this one, so these are the two I would have to study. <clears throat> this one I don't have to study because straight lines, 1.67, given right here. I mean, I have to study it, I have to think about it, I have to consider it. Uh, straight line bending moment. You know, that straight line bending moment is not given in the... Yeah, it's on this other guy here. Moment on one end, no moment on the other end, straight line. 
1.67. That'd be another good one to copy down in the introduce it into the manual. Now, here we go. The beam. It's got 200 kips or something on it at uh, 5 feet. And there's also a hydrogen balloon connected to it. Uh, that's 2P and that's P. And then here's the rest of the beam. This is A and A and 10A. First thing I do is to get a shear moment diagram. I saw for moments about this point. 2P times A minus P times 2A. Well, that's already, that's already zero. So this reaction is zero. Draw a shear diagram. Here's your moment diagram. Moment diagram will go, uh, this reaction is P. This moment would be P times A. P times A. This moment would be zero again. Here's your moment diagram. So now here you have a beam, and this beam is 12A long, and it's got a little spike moment. And I don't know what those are doing there because they're not anything, really. Somebody asked me something. And the M max is P times A, and the moment of the quarter is zero, and the moment of the half is zero, and the moment of the C is zero. When I plug that into C sub B correction factor, 12.5 times P times A, Divided by 2.5 times P times A, plus 0, plus 0, plus 0. All right. I get a correction factor of 5. Now this is, I just pulled one out of the book here. This is for a W21 by 55. I went and looked up its LP. I looked up its L sub R. And so I went past L sub R, went out to 20 feet, and and I actually just pulled this number off of page 3-129, those, those graphs, rather than solve for it. And so, according to Timoshenko's equation, I had 231 coming to me. And then I talked, and the Christmas present guy says, don't forget, i got a package here for you with a bow on it. Oh, I forgot. I get more than 231, don't I? He says, yeah, multiply that rascal times 5. So I took 231 times 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I should have written it down. Oh, here it is down here, 1155 kip feet. Wonderful. I can use every kip foot that's there. Lies, all lies. You can't go above in plastic. I mean, that's all that's there. So that's the limit. How much you get? 473. And you can have the 473. It's really yours. I mean, you really do have a strange situation where your beam has very little tendency to laterally torsionally buckle. But the moments back in this region, they're going to form a plastic moment and they're going to fail the beam at that point. So be careful when you multiply that C sub B in there. It does not uh, increase the moment, according to Timoshenko's equation, equation, above M plastic. We were using a W. Oh, here's the, yeah, this is the W21 by 55. This is where I got this number from. Although it may not look like it on this curve, here's the 231. I'm looking for a W, 21 by 55, picked it random, 20 feet long. Here is the 20 feet long. I only looked at about 30 pages before I finally said, oh, there it is, a W, 21 by 55. And it has, you know, somewhere out in here, it says I got 231 kip feet. That's where I got it from. And incidentally, here's your 21 by 55. 
it goes to there and they just quit telling you. They just don't even give you anymore. They say, look, you're, you're crazy if you use that beam for anything any longer. Just doesn't have enough strength left to make it worth your while. Go get a bigger beam. All right, now then, what do you do if you have flanges that really are long, stick out, and they're skinny? Really very simple. If you remember your formula, I wonder if I could find that. I doubt it. Your formula in, in first place in this region, uh, you're going to have to find out whether or not the things are too slender. The web and the flange. In this region, you're going to have to find out if they're too slender. But down in here, you are losing so much strength that you just never find that those things control. They barely control even over in this region here. Here's what your equation said. It said M nominal is equal to M plastic minus, it had M plastic parentheses, minus 0 0.7 F sub Y S sub X. And then it said L brace minus L plastic divided by L when the radius of gyration kills you, minus L, uh, darn it, L plastic. That was the equation for how much your beam lost strength as you got out into that straight line portion. What it turns out is the same thing exactly happens to you if the lambda of your flange or the lambda of your web gets out past lambda plastic and lambda radius of gyration. The equation is identical. The only thing is, instead of sticking in uh, L sub B, which you get to say what it is, that's how close you put the brace points together, you use the lambda of the flange, that's that uh, measure of how much tendency it is for it to buckle locally, B sub F over 2 T sub F. Here were your things out of that table. One was lambda plastic and one lambda radius of gyration. I don't know if you remember the numbers, 0 0.38, 0 0.1. Good chance I brought that table with me. Here's a W14 by 90. Look on the next page. There are your B sub T over 2 T sub Fs. There's your web tendency to buckle. Don't, I guess I got that table. I remember trying to remember the name of it, too. Don't remember the name of it. But I remember this. There were two of them. There was one of them for columns, and there was one of them for beams. And one of them said compression members, and one said for bending members. And it had, you remember that? Case 1, case 5, case 9, case 15... Those are the tables I'm talking about where these things right... Oh, here they are right here. Uh, it is on page 16.1-47. No, that's the equation. Thank you. 16.1-17. Never do that again. I will remember to write that down. Now then, on page 17, do we have columns or beams? Beams is the one I'm looking for. That's where those came from. And you find out how much your nominal moment has been hurt by simply running that equation out right there. And he's got an example of it right here where you plug in the lambdas rather than the links and you find out how much the beam has been hurt, if at all. You only do that if it's got slender, slender elements. You only do that for this guy. You only do that for this guy. Because there's your F, says you've been hurt in flexor. <coughs> See you next time.
Yes, sir. I ran into quite the problem, I realized this morning. Um, my family had planned for a weekend vacation this weekend. We're leaving Thursday. Great. Where are we going? I mean, if you want to come with. Well, I'm, you're paying. Aren't you? I don't have any money. Is that why you're here? Yeah. Well, oh, no. You're telling me you're going to go without me? I am. Wow, well, this possibly, sucks, man. Look at this. Possibly take the makeup exam. That's okay. What What exam? Friday, not this Friday, next Friday. Yeah. Wow. Okay. It, it happens. Okay. Well, it's not fine. Oh, you know, I'll make out a make out for I went you. Your website and read everything. No, no, that's okay. Or not harder, yeah, yeah, okay. You really did read the. <laughs> yeah, I went through everything. I did That'll be prepared. fine. That'll be fine. And there'll okay. be somebody, you know, will not also take it. I'll know Friday who doesn't, so okay. I'll be. Uh, I'll email you all my stuff. So you email your stuff, so I won't bother emailing you. I'll email anybody else who didn't take it. Then I will tell you who, and I'll tell them who. Who you're gonna have? Well, it won't be a week after. I mean, within the week after. Yeah, probably if any, if I can get them back on Monday. Now you know, are you gonna be back Monday? Yeah. They may not. You know, if they're in the hospital or something, they won't be. So it may be longer than that. Okay. So well, right. we'll work it out. All right, Where are you going? We're going to Mardi Gras. Wow, yeah. never been to Mardi Gras. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Tag along. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, I turned in uh, the homework that was due Wednesday on Monday. And yeah. Picked it up today. Irrelevant homework. Please submit again. Well, this is okay. He just wants you to stick it back in the envelope. Oh, okay. He just didn't know what to do with it, you know, and he's so swamped as it is. I think it's a lady. Yes, ma'am. Hey, yeah. We have the opportunity. To go to the um, subsea tieback forum. And when is that? In San Antonio, it is the fifth the day that's going to affect your class. Yeah, but does that mean is it on a major exam day or something? No, that's no. Gonna... it's the that's fine. Wednesday after, after that. Wednesday no, Wednesday? that's yeah. fine. Okay. Just okay. take a look at the videos and keep up mm -hmm. with the class notes as best you can. Okay. And if you see a pop quiz, go look and see what you do in case you miss a pop quiz. Okay. Can we turn the homework in afterwards or do you want to turn it on? Monday? You can turn it in afterwards. It'll be all right. But, uh, again, if you do that, mm -hmm. see, he handed it in early, and the guy wrote, that's is irrelevant, <laughs> and made him resubmit it. So you can do that. Or you can hand it in afterwards, but be sure you write uh, excused absent and just get me the initial at the end of class, okay. and then we'll throw it, in the, throw it in the stack. Thank you. Thanks. Okay.